Hello, uh, I'm Barry. This is Chris. Uh, welcome to another episode of Cool Discussions, guys. Um, today is a pretty exciting episode for us. We're going to be talking about something that's a hot button topic, guys. The the thing that you talk about at the at the holiday dinner table when you guys have had a few cocktails sometimes, and sometimes it can get a little bit heated. No, guys, we're not talking about the Kardashians or Justin Bieber. We're going to be talking a little bit about religion, guys. <laughs> We're going to be talking a little bit about uh, where we believe humans have come from. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying that I'm not a scientist. Okay, I'm like, so I'm not going to be sitting here spewing facts about science because it would just be me blubbering somebody else's stuff because sometimes when I see it, I'm going, huh? What? So that's, that's what I'm going to preface. I'm not a scientist, guys. So if I come across stupid or anything about science... That's because I'm not a scientist. Uh, I do know stuff about science. I went the science route. I just had an unfortunate turn of events to a certain point. So um, I do know some of the things about science. Um, when they, <clears throat> when uh, people use big words, I can understand some of them. Maybe not all of them, but it's not I too understand bad. the words. I understand what they like mean, <laughs> but I don't uh, like like the the. The practical use of them. Like, I couldn't sit down and solve a physics equation or oh, very uh, a chemical it's engineering question. It's been a long question. time since I've done like that. That's so, what I'm talking about. Yeah. So when somebody throws out all these things, I'm going, what? Okay, I'll believe you. I trust you. You're a scientist, not me. You have the PhD, not me. That's that's what I'm talking about. Now, you're asking probably yourself, why are we going to be talking about this? There's why? A why? That's a good question. It's because uh, a couple years back now, I guess 2016... Um, a guy named Bill Nye, the science guy, we all know him from the show, and a guy named Ken Ham. He uh, is the, I guess, owner, creator of the uh, Creation Museum that's in the U.S. Um, they had themselves a, l- a little debate, and we watched that uh, a little bit ago, and we decided, hey, that's pretty interesting. Let's talk about it. Because as you know, some people think that we evolved there was a big bang, and the earth was here, and some people went, magic wand, God, boom, the earth is here. <laughs> magic wand, okay, I yeah. guess that's one one way to look at it, but it's so not. So I think you know where I am. <laughs> I have a feeling you're going to guess where I'm coming from on that one. So I watched it, uh, I watched uh, eight months, nine months ago, I enjoyed it, um... I thought it was an interesting starting point. Like me and a guy at work, we ended up talking about it. Not for very long. He, uh, yeah, we just didn't want to talk too much. But it, it is an interesting subject, you know. Um, it's creationism great. versus evolution. Uh, the whole point of the YouTube videos, the, the, the debate is, is creationism a good model to be taught in schools? And then... Uh, the it wasn't it was, the debate wasn't about hey is this which one is real and which one isn't the debate was more of a is the is Ken Ham's model viable yes that's what the debate was about we're not uh, well in my mind I'm not going to sit here and debate whether whether it is or not I'm going to give my opinion on I don't know his cracker jack opinion <laughs> you know and and just how like I've watched tons of other videos from other people on on the internet and. And it's kind of just, it's good. It's good stuff. So, um, obviously, I believe that we came with the Big Bang. You know, boom. And then that's how everything started. I believe the Earth is billions of years old, not thousands of years old. Um, that Because there's been scientific proof of of dating and stuff like that. And, and I know that people say that these... Um, processes that they use that are flawed. Well, that is actually one of the main points that uh, Mr. Ham does bring up is carbon dating. And, you know, how accurate is it? Um, uh, I, one of the things I looked up was um, how did they date the Earth, right? So you go on to line and you start researching all this stuff and they actually don't use Earth material to date the Earth. At all, they actually use um, rocks from the moon and meteorites, and that's how they determine the age of our solar system. 
and they put it at like three and a half billion year billion years old. They can't use Earth rocks because of... Um, Didn't they say they used the Arctic snow and they used... Yeah, okay, uh, and they used Arctic snow to figure stuff out, and it's just like Bill Nye threw some numbers at you stating, stating that you would need 170 seasons, yeah, like uh, winter, full, summer, year, yeah. full year seasons to get... Um, uh, you would need 170 in a year to make it for 4, x amount years. of years to make it look like there was uh, like 250,000 well, years. Well, he said of... that it was um, 170 winter summer cycles every year for the Earth to be 4,000 years old. Because yes, when yeah. they did the da- dating of the <clears throat> because ice the, the, okay, um, one of the stopping points that they do do is based off of everything from the flood, and according to Christian ideology. Uh, the flood was 4,000 years ago, and then the civilization existed before that, before the flood uh, wiped out all mankind. And then from there, that's what they're trying to state is a starting point, because, you know, if uh, there was a great flood, everything would have been starting anew um, from 4,000 years old, so you wouldn't find anything over 4,000 years. But wouldn't you find still traces of the Ark? When Whoa. you find how okay, number one, okay, this is this is this is where I think this is to me this is where the whole thing could be debunked is this Noah's Ark theory. Okay, number one, you have um, you have thing uh, some guy building this humongous ark. Yep. Um, he, he was an unskilled worker, right? No, that's not true. Okay, well, he was any, like a, anywhere in, anywhere in, in the historical any historical text, it doesn't state. What Noah was okay, so okay, okay. Oh, they, 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 he, he was they a master he, carpenter, whatever. They mentioned that he whatever. was a farmer. Okay, okay, but uh, back before the flood, people used to live uh, an incredibly long time, up to eight hundred years. People used to live eight hundred years. Yes, and you look at me funny, oh, but yeah. scientists have actually found the gene that can unlock eternal youth, eternal youth. So, you know, living to be 800 years old, if you can find a gene that unlocks internal youth, isn't that far-fetched. Have we found any evidence of people who live that long? No. So why wouldn't we find evidence? That, <coughs> because, that's what I mean. But, that's okay. what I mean. You, 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 we sit here and, okay, number one, I'm going to go back to the ark. Okay, so even if he was like, so he was a farmer. Okay, how many farmers do we know, just in general, okay, that know how to build a ship? Okay, okay, fine. He knows how to build a ship. We'll say he knows how to build a ship for... Arguments that he built this humongous ship almost two thirds the five. size of the Titanic. Yep. Okay. With him and how many people? Eight people. Mm-hmm. Right. And he built that, and they they've had proof of like pe- skilled, like so sort of quote unquote skilled oh. people who made ships and they've broken apart, but this ship magically stays together. Um, and he feeds all these animals. He feeds himself for however many days. Okay, he... but okay, uh, uh, Mr. Ham states that w- you're basing your knowledge on the fact that these people were stupid. These people might not have been as stupid as you're giving them credit for. Because, yes, okay, he was a farmer, but, you know, if you're 500 years old, maybe you're farming because you're in the last little bit of your life and that's what you want to do is retirement. Yeah, but Who then you're just... Who knows what he used to do? But then you're just assuming the same thing. Like, the Bible... The, but, okay, hold on. Why is your assumption... It's no different. M- m- they're, better they're, they're, than my assumption. Well, it isn't. And that's, and that's but, a but big you're, thing. You're, you're, but, you, but the people, the Bible, the people who, who follow that Mount model say this is the right way. True. A lot of a lot of and a lot of stuff that I've seen. These people who who are like I'm a, I believe the Bible and God's way are like this is the way. No matter what you say, and, that's and just scientists like, okay, are whoa. even doing and scientists are even doing the same thing. But I don't think so because no. But okay, they're 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 pushing evolution and they're going oh this is the way it is and it's just like well. But I don't I don't think so. I from well, what I got was it. Bill Nye did admit sometimes of hey I don't know. Yes. And that's that's the biggest thing. The difference is that's that's where I find the biggest difference is this. Right. So when you're in science and in that kind of in that path, the the unknown is there because people don't know. There are answers that are unknown. Yes. Whereas in the Bible, it's like if there's an unknown, it's well, it's God did it. True. And but and it's like well, but how do but but then there's been things in science, right, that we go, hey, it's ABC, and then later on we go, oh, whoops, 
We it wasn't ABC. It was XYZ. Uh, yeah, but okay. But here's the thing. We uh, that doesn't happen until after an older generation has passed on. Because right now, for example, you know, we all think one way, we all think similar thoughts, and then all of a sudden we find out that we're wrong. Well, all those people who think similar thoughts aren't all suddenly going to go, oh yeah, we're wrong. We're going to go, no, that can't be right. And there's going to be doubting, skepticism, etc. And then what will happen is as the new generation comes up, learning the fact that it was done a different way, they're going to be more accepting. So it's just, you know, stubborn people digging in and going, oh, this is the way it always has been. This is the way it's always going to be. Yeah. So, yes, science has a tendency to go, we're wrong. Bible people tend to be pig-headed and stubborn and go, we're right. I totally disagree with that because as much as uh, Christian Christians like to think that they're right about everything, we're not. You know, we make mistakes, we get things wrong. Um, the, but mo- most Christians won't admit that. Most Christians won't say that I'm wrong. It's like uh, a okay. lot of Christians say like, like, oh, this is God's way, and this is God's will. Like, you can it's, see the, it's the like, one the, of those easy answer things. It's it's kind of like... Uh, it's almost like they're scared to be like, I don't know. It's like the, the fear of saying, the unknown is like a scary thing. And okay, it's like, here's one thing. My pastor always said, if you don't know an answer, don't know an answer, and just state it. Use it. I don't know. And that was his answer. And it's like, there are some things I can't give an answer for. For example, like, uh, I used to believe that the the Earth is three and a half billion years old. I don't... I I hate saying it out loud because it sounds silly that the Earth is only like 6,800 years. And it's like, yeah, you say it out loud, it sounds silly. But uh, my thinking is, is that... Yes, it was all created, but it was not necessarily... It was created, and it was given age on purpose. So that's why things don't always seem to work out in people's heads. Because if if you make... I got it here. If you make something... um, For example, if you're building a model, right? And you make that model, you don't... You want that model to have on the authenticity to it. So you uh, paint it a certain way to give it age or rust characteristics, right? Depending on the model, what you're making. Yeah. <clears throat> you don't make it look brand new because then it looks brand new and it doesn't necessarily uh, do what you want it to. Like, some people want to make like a brand new model and they some build do, yeah. Yeah, and that's the way they do it. Other people want to give it age. Like um, in movies, when they're making uh, suits. On the Martian, right? The the movie The Martian? Yeah. You know, that uh, space suit. They, they gave it wear and tear and age, you know, even though... Well, it was for effect. Exactly, but it's for effect. When God created the Earth, he created everything for effect. So God created three and a half billion year old atmosphere in the ice? Uh, the ice is arguable. It's not three and a half billion years in the... Oh, whatever it is. It's whatever. The, the <coughs> six billion, four billion... No, 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 no. Okay. The ice thing, billions. the ice thing, he only hit, what, what did you say, 125 years, 125,000 no, like, years or something? No, it was, uh, no, it was, I didn't write it down, but 170 <laughs> Okay, no, no, okay, no, no, cycles, okay, I, so, I get that. But I can't um, remember what the number was. If you look it up, uh... Determining the age of the Earth by ice can be more difficult because you don't necessarily... um, We all assume... uh, This is the assumption part. This is interpretation of data. And this is where uh, you have many people disagree with things. Yes, you can drill straight down and then you automatically assume that every layer is a year. Whereas it could have just been uh, a, a very short summer one year yeah but so it was, there was still no s- ice build up or there was a really long and there was lots of ice build up but for that to a factor of uh, uh, okay a the, the, when, when they talk about the trees when they talk about the trees right, right? the rings in the trees how um, when you bore into a tree pull it out you can technically count each yeah. uh, ring to figure out how many years well um, if you look it up uh, they state that uh, Places like California, which don't see extreme seasons, it's harder to count 
rings in a tree than in a place that has an extreme season like here in Calgary, where you can actually... But would you get the huge gap then? That's the thing. If it's 6,000 to 4 billion, but okay, it's kind of a huge gap. No, uh, but the ice never gives you the uh, billions of years. <clears throat> the ice only gives you 250,000 years at maximum. But the rocks, like that's what, like... All the rocks and the layers and stuff. But okay, like that. if if it, Noah it, okay. had all these animals on the ark, right, and then these animals would be in the same time period, right? So you would have like a rock, like what Bill and I was saying, you would have the rock, and you would have every species would intermingle every like fossil. You would see mo- like the same ones in different. They would all mix together. You know what I mean? Like you would have like a a bird with a a donkey in the same level if you know what i mean like there were the, in so in the bottom bed there would be the same animals there is in the top layer of the rock no right no because if they all exist at the same time there would be you, you would still have but you you would like so you wouldn't have like layers of you would find somewhere where there would be m- intermixing of Fossils. See, I never understood that when he was talking. Whenever he talked about that, it is I never got. And it. you would find like it crash in Babylon or uh, the Middle East, as we call it today, right? Mm-hmm. And so you would find like he had every animal on his ark, right? Right. So like he had a zebra, yes, or he had a kangaroo, right? Yes. Okay. So how come we don't see a kangaroo but, okay. fossil in okay. the Middle East, but <clears throat> only in Australia? Now, according to. Uh, the, uh, scientists, fossils take an incredibly long time to to make, right? So, sure. if you're talking about a flood 4,000 years ago, that isn't uh, enough time to make a fossil. But we still find fossils. Though. But that's the thing, is fossils don't take a long time to make. And on top of that, um, when an animal is migrating, is it there in one space long enough to actually... Uh, have that, but there's gonna be uh, no, no. Fossils are found. We don't find lots of fossils. Yeah, but we don't. The reason why is because fossils only ha- occur under certain circumstances. If an animal dies, it has to be buried really quickly <coughs> for it to fossilize. But we've and never found. We've never. There's never been any but, cases of. But that's the thing. A polar bear in the Middle East. <laughs> Has there? No, no. Simply because, okay, um, Ken Ham was stating that on the Bible there was, uh, or sorry, on the Ark, there was only... Um, he said there was 7,000 or something like that, wasn't he? Didn't he? Oh, what did he call them? Kinds. Kinds. Yeah. Now, a kind is, his <clears throat> interpretation of a kind was a dog... Is a kind. Is a kind, right? And then from a dog, and we know this to be true, is you can breed hundreds of different species from one type of dog. They have actually uh, brought uh, an extinct uh, dog back to life through breeding processes. So what they're stating is all these dogs come from one kind. So if you have a pair of dogs, not the way we understand a dog would look like now, but a dog that was 4,000 years ago, a dog has sex. It can have a litter of up to six, right? Something like that. You know, and then they can go, oh, what, did, what did my pastor say? He said, a rabbit pair can breed in a year uh, one million rabbits in a year. Okay. Right? Yeah. I'll so take your word on it. If you're breeding well, you're one... Well, you're saying, I, I think I know you're saying, like, so, that it's going to evolve into different types so, of... Okay, in the Middle East is where things would start. So you would see the basic kinds of animals, and then they would spread out and eventually evolve. Have we evolve. seen a bear in the Middle East, though? Any type of bear fossil? There used to be. Or any type of um, no, but, horse or zebra or kangaroo, koala, anything like that? Have we no, but, seen okay. anything like now, that? Now, they talk about evolution, right? Things wouldn't have needed to evolve to adapt to their... Because Middle Eastern animals wouldn't need lots of fur, wouldn't need lots of this. So... Uh, some of them would move away, and as they move away, different adaptations but, but of animals... See, but we see only certain animals in certain areas of the world. Because so they evolved so, but there's, but, yeah, but to there's that no, area. There's no migration of... You don't see any migration patterns of 
of anything. But you don't see like. But we we see bears all the way from the North Pole down to um, uh, the middle of America. We see bears in uh, Europe. Um, we see bears in Russia. So you know the top part of the top hemisphere of the world. Uh, I don't think the bottom hemisphere, because simply they never went that way, or they were hunted mm -hmm. to extinction. Because mankind has that tendency to hunt things, right? And you know what? If there's only like a hundred animals in your little neck of the woods, and you hunt them all, well, guess what? You're not going to see anything. No, I... they're, they're not going to be around to make fossils. They're not going to be around But you wouldn't think evidence. that at some point we would find something. No, because fossils, like... fossils are rare to no. begin with. Are they? Yes. But how? But people can be walking in like a national but, but, park okay. and pick something but, up, and there's a fossil in it. And you know what the fossils you know are? I mean? it's those like, little sea creatures. Yeah. Okay. Those little sea creatures, if they were in the oceans, alive by the billions, just say we'll throw a theoretical number at you. Fossilization only happens one in a hundred, right? So if you only have one hundred animals and of one uh, species, one of them will become a fossil, right? The chances of finding that fossil are there much harder than if you have a billion and one out of every hundred, so that's a hell of a lot, uh, a lot of fossils. So you're going to find those fossils by comparison. So if you're if if you're fossilizing things, y you have to you have to have large quantities. Of an animal to build a habit, but haven't we only show found one of something before? We've never found large quantities of. But that, that's why I'm saying is like we've never found large quantities of. No, but that's what I'm. That, Rex that, that, that's what I'm stating is fossilization is rare. That's why we only find a few like T. Rexes. We've never. Okay, I don't know if this is correct, but we've never found a complete T. Rex. Skeleton. We've only been able to put it together uh, from uh, partial fossil records throughout the entire world. So, if we can only find like one or two full skeletons from around the world, how are we going to find fossils of a kangaroo that was only in certain parts?